Good morning, everybody. Wow, this newest Westworld episode went off the rails. Now, we knew that there was lots and lots of disclosure going on in the Westworld TV series, but this was unreal. Now, many of you remember season three, I believe it was, that we had covered that predated the spam demic in which they depicted a world of people wearing masks. Surgical masks. This was before the spam demic had ever happened. Remember the scene? There were children playing in the playground with masks on. And we found that. And then months later, they announced a worldwide spam demic. So there was lots of disclosure in the Westworld series. And in this newest episode, full disclosure about 5G and its plan to imprison the minds of the world. Now, let me give you a little bit of the backdrop of this before we break this down. I've got a montage for you guys today, as I always do. In this episode, the main character begins to wake up to discover that she is writing the script for all of Westworld. Now, she doesn't realize it. At first, but she has to wake up to this. She actually writes the programs that run people's lives. She is the mind behind Westworld. Look at her as like the artificial intelligence, okay? The programmers, the algorithms that modify human behavior in our reality through the reinforcement and intelligence gathering. And feeding back that data to the people that consume it. Now, of course, all this is only made possible by 5G and beyond technology. Because you can't do this with less robust networks. Hive G took it to another level, didn't it? As well as 6G. And so, yes, algorithms shape the human narrative. They shape human behavior. In fact, they shape it so much so that we are building our own prison. Let's take a look at this. She gets this feeling that she just can't shake. That there's something wrong with the world. Every single day she wakes up, the more she sees it. But nobody else can. Now I want you to notice the imposition of the Freedom Tower with the Hive G Tower that exists in Westworld. Because the two are one. Let's watch. She inherited money from her parents. This world is just a story. I'm the storyteller. World's just a story, and I'm the storyteller. She begins to wake up to her role in Westworld and realizes that things are not what they seem. Now, you notice, I'm going to back this up a little bit, because you're going to notice the sound that the tower makes. It's the sound of a rattlesnake. Let's back this up so you can hear this. This is crazy. It is literally a snake. So, there is your clue, and then a subscriber sent me the side-by-side -side that I'm going to show you in a second here, of a snake in the striking position next to this tower that you're going to see here in Westworld that basically sends out the signal to control humanity. I'm the storyteller. So there's the programming. Now think about it. Think of all of the things that we just do because of traditions and under the banner of customs and just because other people did it before us. It's like we're running a program. Now the Bible talks about this 
It's called the traditions of men. Some of, I believe the Bible says there are vain traditions of men, which means there are things that we do that have absolutely no spiritual value, that suck up our time, waste our money, our resources, and energy. So what are some examples of these programs that we run? I'm sure you guys can think of some. I'm in the chat now. I can think of a couple. Now I'm going to... We're going to do a little word play here, and I'm just going to state one word in each part of the program because that's how these people communicate, right? It's code. They use code. They use trigger words to prompt human behavior, right? So here's one. I'm going to just say one word at a time, and let's see if you can pick up on the program. Proposal. Engagement. Ring, announcement, engagement party, wedding planning, cake, photographer, invitations, dress, gift registry, ceremony, thank you cards, home purchase, children, dog, cat, Bigger house, divorce, lawyers, custody, child support. How many millions of people have run this exact program? Now, I'm not saying marriage is bad, of course, but look at the how, what's the word I'm looking for? Predictable it is. It's predictable and all of us have known people that have gone through that exact program programming over and over again why isn't it any different you would think that if it wasn't a program that there would be different types of elements in this it would be somewhat random but it is not random at all it's a program that we run isn't it now why is it always the same series of steps clones copies that we just accept and take for granted why doesn't anybody ever do anything differently it appears to me that we are running on program loops and it's reinforced by the media and anybody that thinks outside of these program loops is called many names aren't they they're called unpatriotic they're called a dissident they're called extreme a little off, crazy, antisocial, not adjusted, and on and on and on. Words that try to curb your behavior back into the programming, right? Now I could illustrate to you several other program loops, but I'll just give you one more. And let's see who can pick up on what I'm saying this time. It all starts with Parental divorce. Few life prospects. Physical abuse. Parental alcoholism. Video games to escape. Specifically war video games. Guns. Hunting. Veteran father. War movies. Recruiter, high school dropout, role selection, proud parents, boot camp, return from, <laughs> can't speak this morning, return from boot camp, warm welcome, pride, brief family love and unity girlfriend marriage baby deployment wife cheats and leaves psychological damage disability returned stateside 
more war movies. Life is meaningless. Depression. Anxiety. No job. Takes one's own life. Or alcoholism. Or pharmaceutical meds. And then the cycle repeats. That is the Patriot algorithm programming. And we've seen it a million times before. I've seen it in people that I know. And it's always the same storyline. Just like in Westworld. Millions and millions of men and women running the same exact program. Now why is the program the same? Why is it so hard to break the script? And I believe there are, it's because there are outside forces and principalities. Which the Bible talks about. They are in place to reinforce the programming. Locking us into these programs. Now let's keep watching here. And this woman that you just saw who gave the order for the humans who were under mind control to dance. She is the queen of the hive. She works in concert with the other woman who writes the scripts and storylines and narratives. And you're going to hear her talk about resonance and frequency. Basically, how God created the universe and how the serpent manipulates these frequencies to control humanity. Now understand that what is happening here is there some truth to this. Developments I've talked about this at length before on this channel. When you look at the periodic table of elements, there's very little separating one element from another. The elements exist in octaves, just like music, with a central core, basic core, and shells within shells of electrons. In other words, by adding additional electron shells, the element becomes heavier and heavier. You start with gases, you move through the liquids and into the solids. But the pieces are exactly the same. There's three basic pieces. Proton, electron, neutron. And so, what is holding all this in place? What is holding these electrons in these different shells the sound of God. He created our universe this way. And this is why when you turn your back on God and you allow sin into your life, sin basically is harming other people. Because that's what sin ultimately ends up doing. It ends up harming your brother or sister. Ruining the harmony in the universe. Or the harmony in creation. Let's put it that way. Universe sounds a little new agey. Harming God's harmony. Notice how the word harm and harmony are opposites of one another. And so, what you have here is this balance. And if there isn't order and balance, in other words, is if there isn't love, sin basically is hurting other people in the balance of God's creation. And so, this is where things start to fall apart in your life. Now, God tries to course correct this for you by continually reaching out to you and showing you the pathway, the narrow path to love, and why He has these rules that He has, why He has the Ten Commandments, why He sent His Son to show us an example of how to live. He tries to reach out to us, but... It's our own selves killing ourselves and harming ourselves and causing discord in our own lives. Now, oftentimes, this disharmony that occurs in our life isn't because of anything we've done, but it's because someone else, usually in positions of power, has levied sin upon us. So this is why you should never get angry at God because things are going wrong in your life. 
Because sometimes it's not even anything you did to yourself. It's outside forces that are not in their balance and harmony with God. And this is why God had to make rules so that we could all prosper and have love and be okay. But because we're in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, there is no through line for this. There's no way out of it except for Jesus. That's why he had to come because it's impossible for man to get themselves out of this. The closest thing that imperfect man had to getting out of this was their direct relationship with God in the Old Testament. And there was a sacrificial system for their sins. And that was the closest thing we've had. And this is why God had to send his son to fix everything. So your belief in him, in your belief, he's taken on all the sin. And then you're saved in the end. The thing is, you have to walk through this life first. And that's really hard for a lot of people to do. Because there's a million reasons why people would give up hope. Let's keep listening to what this lady has to say. You should hear it on an organ. It's mesmerizing at that volume. Do you think this is why the old gods did what they did? Instead of staying up on Olympus, they'd come down to the mortals. So obviously that's about the fallen angels. Now, one by one, the humans inside of Westworld begin to wake up. This one real thing. Before it's over, tell me one thing. Is this at least real? Now, the daisy. We've seen the daisy, haven't we? Over and over again. She loves me, she loves me not. We saw it in Baron Samadaisy, and I'm not quite sure what it means, but it has something to do with the hive mind. Daisies connect to each other under the soil and basically talk to each other. It is a hive mind kind of plant. It also represents death. Let's keep watching here. What? Wow. So there's some tr truth in this, obviously. This is a lot of disclosure going on here, as I explained earlier in the show. Our behavior is already being manipulated by the enemy through media. It's already happening, and it has been happening for a very long time, since media, media's inception. This is why we spend so much time on this channel deprogramming people from the media. Those who don't want this work done are just like the people in Westworld who don't want you to wake up. And many forces are brought to bear to keep you locked in this programming. Now, some people suggested, Casey, if everyone would just turn their TV off, then we, everything would be fine. And you're absolutely correct. The problem is, the programming causes people to turn their TV on. And 95% of humanity is being programmed. So, you have to deprogram people with decodes like this. People say, well, aren't you reinforcing people watching the programming by decoding the programming? No, they're going to watch it anyway. Because the forces that are brought to bear to keep them locked in the programming are much greater and stronger than this YouTube channel. So we're basically playing cleanup hitter to try to help people wake up <clears throat> and at least understand the programming so that they're not tricked by it. We're never going to convince the world to stop watching the programming. The enemy is too strong in that regard. There aren't enough people awake and there isn't enough and, and it's probably not even possible. I mean, anything's possible with God, but that's not in his plan. His plan is what the Bible says his plan is. That all this kind of has to happen, but you don't have to be part of it. And the end will come and you have to endure till the end. And then the rest is gravy. The rest is a world free of sin, free of the devil and his vices and all these things. And you get to be with Jesus and God and the angels. Now, people react viscerally when they see something that opposes their worldview and paradigm, don't they? It's not very popular at all to realize that what you're watching on TV could be anything. It could be a presidential campaign. 
or even a simple commercial. It's hard to wake up one day and realize that every little bit of it is programming and dictating your behavior. As you stuck in program loops, let's keep watching. All the people in the city move in pre-scripted loops, following whatever plot's been written for them. Now here's here this is crazy. Here you have the One World Freedom Tower, Statue of Liberty, which represents freedom. But I think, and I'm not sure about this in this part of the decode, but I think the people who are under the mind control, they see Lady Liberty. But for those who have broken the mind control, they see the Serpent Tower. And here's what the subscriber sent to me. And to me, this is dead on. This is a serpent in the striking position. And this is their Hive G Tower. Notice the piercing component, the fangs, these hollow hypodermic needle fangs, the split tongue speaking out of two sides of your mouth. I'll make it at warp speed, but it's going to be a choice. Split tongue speaking. Notice that this also has two needles, two fangs, one up and one down, above and below. Unbelievable. And that brings us to the Blind Eleven Water Towers. This world is a lie. A well told one. But a lie all the same. It's a, a story. It's Blind 11 Water Tower. Now, this one had me stumped for many years since Blind 11. This iconic water tower. And let me go back in here and make sure you guys are with me. I believe the Holy Spirit is finally revealed. And what does the water tower represent? Here they are right here. The water towers. There's four of them in that picture. Everybody remembers the water towers in front of the slim towers now remember the tower can only be seen by people who wake up almost as if it is holographically camouflaged and that's all of us we see their tower don't we we see it as plain as day freedom is not freedom at all it's slavery so what do these water towers mean? This is going to blow your mind. Because I believe that the images of these water towers, these water tanks, sometimes people call them, is all about the birth of the new order. Out of the chaos of Blind 11. Now this is the original Superman movie from 1978. Many of you will remember he flies through the towers. Look at the color of his suit. It represents the birth out of water of the serpent. The beast coming up out of the sea. This is why it's blue with the serpent in the chest. Remember the artificial intelligence that spoke to Superman in the Fortress of Solitude? To guide him on his journey to Earth. And he thought it was his father speaking to him. But it was actually a computer. Now many of you will remember. In the film. That Hoover Dam. Bursts. This is a screenshot from the film. Superman. And this is happening right now. Remember the explosion. All of the bodies coming up out of the sea. Lake Mead sacrifice. Mead being 
wine made out of the death of the bees in the hive submerged in water. You can't make this up, you guys. This is spiritual revelation. Look at the transformer that explodes here. Almost in the same position of the explosion that happened just a week ago. Which was also in the film, The Transformers, the original film. When Megatron lands right here, exactly in the spot where the Transformer blew up. Now this Transformer is a little further down, but you get the drift. It's all on the same side. That's the left side, I guess, if you're standing on Hoover Dam. That may have some significance. Basically, what you're looking at here is a woman in labor. Up on the stirrups. The birthing in of artificial intelligence. The birthing in of the AllSpark. The birthing in of the serpent. It's happening right now. The water towers are basically the birthing in of all of that through Blind 11. Now, let's keep going here. Let's break down the etymology of the word water tower or water tank. Let's go back to this image so you guys can see this. You can get a visual of this. I'm, I'm blocking this out because we live in a reality now where these images that I'm showing you right here on your screen are flagged. And if you show this image, your video will be flagged. Isn't this unbelievable? You can't even show an image of it. Even this little piece of the image, there's an algorithm that searches it out. Because they don't want all this being talked about after the fact. They want your memory of it to be the way they want your memory to be of it. Let's break down the etymology of the word water tower or water tank. Because. Let's do a little Q&A here. Water tower, water tank. What? does that mean to you what does the the letters wt what can they also mean that relates to blind 11 let's see who gets it first so that anyone from the outside in watching this doesn't think we're crazy because everybody's going to get this one this is decode 101 what is water tank water tower wt what does that mean as it relates to blind 11 Let's see who gets it first. It takes a while for this chat to catch up. All right, let's see who gets it first. Less than a minute to go in the round. <laughs> it's just catching up. I'm sure someone's already got it, but it takes a minute. There you go. Big C got it. Went by really fast. And now you get, you're starting to get how they name these things. WT. Water tower, water tank, world trade. Now, Casey, you're just stretching stuff. Come on. There's no way. It's all about the water and the birthing in. WWW, the home of artificial intelligence. It's the literal address. We remember, we rebuild, we come back stronger. This was Bo Mama and what he signed on the beam of the WT Center. When it was rebuilt in the One World Freedom Tower. The root of artificial intelligence is the WWW address. Now where did that come from? What is the etymology of that? Well, I'm not quite sure, but I can tell you this. This is the dog god WWW. Whip -wa wet. And as you can see, the WT is part of his name as well. What does Whip -wa wet do? Well, he's a wolf dog god, the looper god. 
Looper means wolf or dog. And he predates all of the ancient gods. In fact, the only gods that came before him was Set. But he predates Anubis. He predates Osiris. And he's also known as Ophoes. Ophoes means serpent. Now, let's get into these water towers and let's read about them. This is Untapped in New York. See if we can gather any other clues about what this these water towers might mean. And this is interesting. Second episode of Untapped New York podcast is all about the New York City water tower. In it, we answer questions like, how do water towers work? How many water towers are there in New York City? What are the water tower companies that build, install, and service the rooftop on top of buildings in this city? You'll learn about the different types of water tanks, the classic wood water tower, and the more modern metal ones. We'll also explore the New Yorkers love how why New Yorkers love the water towers so much. So here are some water towers. Now most of these are made out of wood, which is kind of weird. New York City water towers, one of the most iconic and ubiquitous elements in the city's skyline. So much so that it has become an oft-used symbol of the city itself. And over the years, it's become much more than just the functional object it was designed as. New Yorkers seem to literally have an emotional connection to water towers with a fervency that doesn't seem to fade over time. Even though you've seen the water tower and brand logos and as art, the object has somehow withstood co-modification. So as background, the first thing you need to know is that New York City's water comes from upstate New York. In fact, it comes from the reservoirs made by the drowning of many towns over a hundred years ago. So now you're starting to see with spiritual eyes. This was the same story of Hoover Dam. They drowned these cities and towns. Dams are symbols of death and rebirth. You kill the town by flooding it with water, rebirth another town by giving it the water. The water becomes sacrificial water. Now I'm speaking on a spiritual level here. Okay. Obviously these towns were evacuated before they were filled in, right? But it's a spiritual thing that the enemy uses. Now let's keep reading here. Water comes down to this great city by gravity. It gains enough speed and pressure. By the time it gets to New York City, the water can go up six floors naturally. That's about 60 to 70 feet. 75 feet. But if you want to get it up any higher, you need pumps and a water tower to store it. That's why the water tower is tied directly to the inexorable quest to build taller and taller in New York City. So the this water represents rebirth, doesn't it? And building and growth. These buildings popping up almost like plants growing up out of the earth. From the sacrificial waters of the towns that were flooded before it. Let's keep reading here. Even though the technology for building skyscrapers has evolved dramatically, the humble water tower remains the most efficient way to store water. Next time you're walking around, look closely at some of the tallest and most modern buildings in New York, and you might see a wooden water tank peeking out at the top. So here's the skyline picture here. See the water tanks? Traditional wooden water tower is almost shockingly simple. Cedar wood planks held together by the pressure of steel hoops on the exterior. Now this raises some memories out, out of the Bible. What was it? Nebuchadnezzar was like a cedar. He got cut down and he got steel bands put around him, didn't he? Or he was compared to that. Maybe you guys can help me out in the chat with that story. But what comes to mind is a stump, a tree stump with metal bands around it. One of those bands was copper. It says here, no glue, nails, or tree, uh, screws are needed. The wood offers a natural insulation that helps the water from freezing in the winter. Material has a clear edge 
over a more modern material like concrete. You'd need concrete walls about two feet deep to achieve the same level of insulation. These benefits explain why the water tank is still so common in New York City, with roughly 10,000 to 15,000 tanks still on the city's rooftops. The oldest water tower company in New York is the Rosenwack Tank Company, which also has a distinction of being the only company in the city that cuts the wood, measures, fits everything together. 1866, they made, uh, they were founded. There's that 66 number. Who sold the business for, in Rose, uh, to the Rosenwax in 1896 for a steal of $55. So there's some of the history of these water tanks. They're usually made from yellow cedar or California redwood, although many materials have been harder and harder to come by for a good price. Pieces of the water tank tower are fabricated off-site, then brought up in pieces through the stairs of a building where they're often too big to fit into a freight elevator. Vertical pieces called staves are shaped to fit into the grooves on the wooden floorboard of the water tower, which sit on top of a metal base. So... Interesting. Look at these water towers. Everything you need to know about water towers. So I'm not going to read any more of this article. I'll pin this for those that are interested. This one, stained glass. Something else with these water towers, isn't there? Definitely think that that's the case. Very important spiritual aspect to New York City. Now let's keep watching this, Westworld. See if we can find any more clues about what's going on. My ex-husband used to talk about it before he was killed. You see it too, don't you? I don't understand. He decided to go home to his partner. He worked too many long hours anyway. So she wakes up. She realizes she can write her own script. And control people. Just by speaking the story. In this case this is her boss. And he starts getting suspicious. Because he realizes she's waking up. And then when he confronts her. She simply starts talking to him as if she's telling the story, and she controls his behavior. Well, it's getting late. A perfect reflection of all of this. Down to the tightest detail. They have the whole world in there. That's what I'm writing, isn't it? So, that's the end of the montage. Obviously, this is much more gaslighting. This is our future. And unless enough of us wake up to what's happening, we will continue to be the ones building our own prison. Now, enough of us won't wake up, because the Bible says enough of us won't wake up, doesn't it? But it doesn't mean we can't try, and we shouldn't be on God's side. We don't just give in to the beast. There are souls that need to be saved, aren't there? And there is going to come a time where people do wake up. And they wake up one day and recognize and don't recognize the world that they live in. Now the Bible says we're not supposed to love this world. You know, I, so many Christians that I talk to love this world. You know, they're making plans. They're like, yeah, yeah you know. I love this world. I love this. I love that about this world. The Bible says we're not supposed to love this world. You're supposed to feel like an outsider here. There's lots of verses in the Bible about not loving this world. And there are verses talking about keeping your eyes fixed on heaven and Christ's return. If you're a comfortable Christian and you're like, hey, I voted for Trump and he, he had a great economy. We need him back so we can be happy again in this world. Then you've already been lost. You're already missing the boat. You've already been deceived. 
because that is not what the Bible says. But we all know that all of this has to happen, doesn't it? It has to happen. Let's go into the chat. Westworld. Wow, what a series. Now, there are several more episodes that we'll be watching, of course. I think they come out every week. Tomorrow, we're actually going to be getting into some between the headlines. Been some new developments. More bodies turning up. In the sacrificial waters of Lake Mead. The drowned bees. Lots of drowned bees are showing up, aren't they? In the waters of Lake Mead. Behind Hoover Dam. So, we're going to report on that. Also, Greasewell gets a spot in a posh prison down in Florida, enjoying the fun and sun and air hockey and whatever else she can cook up. Yoga. I mean, are you kidding me? With appeals still on the table, possibility that this, you know, this woman could be walking around in two or three years. We're going to cover that tomorrow and several other headlines. You, get, oh, you can't see those at the top, but uh, we'll be covering several other headlines tomorrow as well. Let's go into the chat. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we pop off here? Bells above. Yes, bells above bees. Buzz, buzz of the bells above. B-L-Z-B. -B. We should decode that, what all that means. Wow. In England, we call the police coppers. Yes, that's why they're blue. They wear blue. Blue bloods. Copper. Copper blood is... Blue blood is copper-based blood. People in power and control. Now, every single cop is in a blue blood, of course. But they're controlled and run by the blue bloods. The enforcement arm of our reality. Take away freedoms and rights. In many cases... All these rules and licenses and this is and that's is that you have to fill out and pay for just to be free. Greasewell trying to control the water's oceans. Yes, that is a huge component to all this. And part of the secret to unlock the codes, Astra. So good, great point there. Yes, she was trying to control the water. She was selling off pieces of water in the middle of the ocean to people. So that you can get some kind of certificate in the mail saying, this is my piece of the ocean. But, oh hey, if you go out there and try to visit your piece of the ocean, then, oh, you can't do that. And who knows what these people were up to. Selling pieces of ocean where they have autonomy. And they can be their own gods. Who knows what was going on on those boats for the people who bought pieces of the ocean. Obviously, these people were up to no good. Now, there was an interesting uh, theory that somebody came up with, and I don't know if this is the case, but i got to be careful how I talk about this. But there was the whole thing about these billionaires um, doing gen like s genetic experiments on women. So they had these women, and they would, they would become pregnant. And someone had an interesting theory on this, that what if these people were cloning themselves, and then storing the clone into kind of test tube or some kind of underground facility so they could hack parts off of this person and do stem cells from their own clone to regenerate their own bodies and that sounds like a reasonable theory to me i mean why else would a billionaire be doing some kind of you know birthing program i mean what other reason would there be behind it so, not sure, but somebody shared that with me the other day. All right, let's see what else is going on in, in the chat. The Queen owns the land under the sea in the British waters. Yeah, they own everything. They say that we own stuff, but we really don't. You can get somewhat close to ownership and hope that they don't bother you. But in the end of all of it, there isn't much left out there that you truly own. The island, says Daryl. Yeah, I think we decoded that several years ago. I don't, I'll have to dig that one up. 
So, yes, these people have massive egos. They want to try to live forever in this reality. We just rent stuff, yes, Ginger, for the most part. No country can own the moon, but no one but no one said a single person can't own the moon. All right. Yes. Look at okay, spell his name backwards. You're not even allowed to talk about him, 322 Messenger. But spell his name backwards. And it spells dragon. What does that tell you right there? Yes, God says, do not accumulate your treasures here on earth. Because he knows it's the devil's monetary system. And to get that treasure, you have to go by the devil's rules and step on people and exploit people. Pay people minimum wage so that they slave away every day. And then when they get in their 40s and 50s, their backs are so broken, they can't even survive. Let me type it in. There you go. So, interesting times, right? Think about it. Slave labor. It was the same thing in ancient Egypt. Pay someone just enough to keep coming back. They're one life crisis away from being homeless. We all know. Making minimum wage, your car breaks down. $1,500 car bill. You're one life crisis away from being homeless. And most Americans live that way. Most people in the world live that way. So, does that sound fair to you when there's people at the top, billions and trillionaires, doing what they want, making money out of money, never have to work again in their life? Do you, they could simply live off the interest? You guys, for people that even accumulate a million dollars, the interest on that, without even touching the principal, is $100,000 a year. Even if you didn't invest it in anything, I mean, invested just in basic commodities or whatever, you could literally sit on that million dollars and not ever have to work again a day in your life. So, all of us at the bottom are the ones propping that up. Propping up that interest, return on interest. Now, people will argue, oh, well, those people earned it. They deserved it. Okay, they did. But it creates a system that's unequal. Where people, without having to put out any effort, and I'm not saying all millionaires don't put out effort because many of them do. They reinvest this money to different things. They try to grow the money. But their worries are not the same as our worries. Our worries are survival. Their worry is, how can I hold on to my million dollars? Notice the difference there. Notice the difference. Completely different life experience. Most people are worried that their car is going to break down. They're carrying that with them every single day. They're worried that they're going to get fired from their job. They're worried that they're going to get laid off. They're worried their landlord is going to raise the rent. They're worried about gas prices. They're worried about you know, food prices going up. They're worried about all these things. What do millionaires and billionaires have to worry about? Pretty much nothing. If they don't want to. Now they create their own worries because they're greedy. And they want to make more money out of the money they have. But really, honestly, can you really feel sorry for somebody? That their only worry in life is how to make more money out of the money that they already made? They're not worried about, oh, let's turn down the air conditioner today and we'll be hot in our 90 degree house. Because we can't afford the $400 or $500 electricity bill. They're not worrying about stuff like that. So this makes me feel like we're still in ancient Egypt. The Hebrews, under the thumb of the Pharaoh, who has all the wealth and money, 
and creating slaves that prop up the system. How is it any different? It's not much different at all, is it? So, all right. Now, we've gotten used to it. You know, I remember when I was young, I loved working. Well, because you have all this energy and it's fun and you're learning about the system. And you're like, cool. I get to go get a job and I get to buy Nikes. I remember my first job. It was at McDonald's. I was a junior in high school. And I got on my bike and it was really cool to get a paycheck, right? Oh, look, it's a paycheck. It looks so official. Right? And I got opened a bank account. Rode my bike after after school. All my friends were like, cool, you work? That's really cool. So I'm making three dollars and fifteen cents an hour. Yep, there you go. Joe knows. <laughs> Joe knows. I was working on uh, Lodi Avenue McDonald's in Lodi, California. That was my first job. And I was like, cool. It was like a family. It was fun. I'll say it was fun. But then, think about it. What kind of alternate reality was I living in? I didn't have to pay the rent. I didn't have to pay for utilities and food and all that stuff. What I made, I got to keep. Now, parents support that in the beginning because they're like, ooh, my child is showing entrepreneurial spirit. They want to work. That's a good thing. It's a positive thing. But that's part of the programming, isn't it? You go to work. Your parents are proud of you because, wow, now they're not going to be bugging me for Nikes. They can buy their own Nikes. And then you start working. And then here comes the drama. Uh, Casey, we need, you, we need you to work out at Kettleman Lane. Now, some of you know this area, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. We need you to go out and work at that store. Well, that store was seven miles from... Woodbridge, where I lived. It was like five additional miles. So I'd ride my bike all the way out there. Rain or shine. Park my bike. Go work out there. I remember my first raise came around. I was like, cool, I'm going to get a raise. Raises. Went from three fifteen an hour to three twenty an hour. I got a five cent raise. And I remember not even being angry about that. I should have been angry about it because basically I was a slave. One day, my manager says, Casey, there's a guy out at the trash can and we need you to tell him to leave. He's taking hamburgers out of the trash can. I said, all right. I went out there. The guy's pulling hamburgers out of the trash can. He goes, these hamburgers are still warm. Why are you guys throwing them away? I said, I don't know. You guys, I was 16, 17 years old. And even back then, I knew there was something wrong with that. Here we are in the store giving away, I mean, I'm sorry, charging people for hamburgers. But then when we throw them away, we can't give them away. That's a problem. Oh, my manager said, we it's, it's quality control. Someone could get sick. It's been on the... It's been sitting on the on the shelf too long. We can't give them away. They could sue us. Programming, right? They always have an answer to how their system works. There's always a good answer. Always a good cover story. They always have a reason why you can't do things that sound perfectly practical. The truth of the matter is, is they don't it would mess up their whole economic system if they just on one end were charging people for the food and on the other hand just giving it away. Who, then who would come in and buy the food? They would just stand in the back and wait for the free food to come. You see the problem now. Nothing makes sense. And once you start waking up from this programming, this is when things get very real. This is when you go, "Whoa, not things are not all that they seem things are not all that they seem this makes absolutely no sense you're going to kick a homeless man out of the corral the trash cans for picking up hot hamburgers 
because he's hungry and my manager has a problem with this. So then the years go by and then the responsibilities start piling up, don't they? And then that little $3.20 an hour job starts to become a thorn in your side. You got to get up every day. Now you're now you're not just working 10 hours a week after school. Now you got to work 40 hours a week. You see the conditioning? Just to make ends meet, just to pay your bills. Then you realize, wow, I don't live with mom and dad anymore. And everything I make, I'm paying in rent and cars and utilities and food. And all of a sudden, this really starts to suck. And then you run into the people that run all of this stuff. And you get a glimpse of that. You get a glimpse of the rich people who create and maintain the slavery. And then you realize how their life is much different than your life. Now, some people call this, you know, wealth hating. No. Because if the wealthy ran things differently, there would be nothing to criticize them about, would there? No, there wouldn't. So... It still is on them. Now I understand that the, this is a spectrum, right? There are people that are minimum wage, working paycheck to paycheck, working very hard. And then there's somewhere in the middle, like the middle class, people with better jobs, usually in education. But they're still living paycheck to paycheck for the most part. And then there's the wealthy. And they're the ones who really don't have a lot of worries other than holding on to their wealth. And trying to keep their greed in check so that they don't lose their wealth. So, that's the story, you guys. That's the story. Alright, let's go back into the chat. I don't know how we got off on that tangent. But we need to talk about this stuff, don't we? All right. My father is not of this world. Absolutely, Laura Lee. All right. Those people are working two to three jobs. Debt slaves. Paper route was Natasha's first job. Yeah, lots of fun in the beginning, right? Yes, do not covet thy neighbor's things. I don't want what they have. I don't want to be rich. Because the Bible says it's very difficult for a rich man to get into heaven. I don't want that. I got enough problems as it is. I don't want now to have my salvation at risk because I got a bunch of money. So no covetousness going on there. I just wish they would, you know, make a fair system and world where people's labors were rewarded. Why does this thing keep popping up? Annoying. So, all right, you guys. We'll be back on tomorrow with Between the Headlines. Thanks for everybody for showing up. And if you're new, welcome to the channel. I'm glad to have you here. Uh, we don't have moderators on this channel. You self-moderate, so if somebody's bothering you, you don't want to see their, you don't want to see their comments. Just go in here on these three dots on the outside, and you can. Um, Block them from your view. Now, when some people get out of hand, I'll actually come in and take care of people, usually after the show. But it's pretty much a free and open platform. Um, there are a few rules. You know, no trolling, of course. Um, no spamming, you know. And be nice to each other. You can disagree, but be nice. So those are the general rules. And we're here every day, usually exact same time, about 7.30, um, what is this, Central Time, uh, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. I love you guys. Take care and be saved. Much love.